So we need you, Pennsylvania. We need you standing with us. We need you praying with us. We need you working, voting, bringing people out. That's the only way this kind of change will happen. From the bottom up, not from the top down. And if you're ready for that kind of change, then he's the man you want. If you don't know what's at stake, then the last thing I'll share with you is a story I've shared all over this country. After the South Carolina primary, I met this young girl, 10 years old, came up to me at a little rally in a beauty shop in Newberry. She walked up to me, pushed through the crowd. She said, Ms. Obama, I need to tell you something. I was like, okay. She said, do you realize when your husband becomes the next president of the United States, it will be historical? <laughs> I said, well, yeah. I said, but what does that mean to you? And she said, without missing a beat, she said, it means that I can imagine anything for myself. <laughs> but then, this little girl broke down in tears right there on the spot. She started crying so hard that it broke my heart. Because I started thinking, well, what is she crying about? Couldn't be me. <laughs> but she couldn't stop. See, and as I think about this little 10 year old girl, I think, you know, this little girl gets it. She knows what's at stake in this election. It's a 10 year old little girl. She knows how far behind she already is. She knows that she's in schools that are underfunded, that won't prepare her for anything. She knows she's living in neighborhoods where most of the people there don't have jobs. She knows that if she gets sick, she won't have access to any kind of health care. She'll sit in an emergency room until her condition worsens. But see, she also knows that she is so much better than the limited expectations that this country has of her. She knows in her heart that she has dreams. <laughs> and dreams is all she has. So don't let anybody tell you that dreaming and hope don't matter. Because there are millions of little kids out there. And all they have are their little bitty hopes. And they are counting on us to get this right. They are counting on us to show them a different side of this nation. Different set of possibilities. They want that veil of impossibility snatched off their heads because it is suffocating them. And how do I know? Because that 10 year old girl was me. I am not supposed to be here. Every statistic says that a little black girl from the south side of Chicago is not supposed to be here. We still live in a nation with somebody like me. And there are thousands of kids out here just like me of all races and locations where the world has told us, no, you can't do that. I had the nerve to think I could go to Princeton. Well, I had counselors telling me, no, your test scores aren't high enough. Well, I applied. I got in. And what do you know? I graduated with departmental honors, so they were wrong. And then I go to apply to law school. People tell me, don't go for Harvard. That might be a little too tough for you. Well, I applied. I got in. I did fine. And there are certainly people who would tell me that I should not even dream of becoming the next First Lady of the United States of America. But the one thing I want young people to know out here, if you get nothing else from this race, no matter what the outcome is, do not let anybody set the limits of your dreams. No one. Because the one thing that I have learned in my life 
is that every time I push past somebody else's limited expectations of who I should become, and I push my way at the table that others felt so entitled to, but these folks were supposed to be so much more prepared and ready. Every single time I got to the table and looked around at these folks, there was no magic there. They were no more prepared or ready. So all we have in this world is a little hoping and dreaming. And I want everybody to close their eyes and just dream a little bit. Because it took a lot of dreaming for me to be here. Dream of the day that a man like Barack Obama is standing in front of the Capitol with his hand on the Bible taking the oath of office to become the next president of the United States. And as you close your eyes and dream, imagine what that image alone will send to the millions of young kids like me, like all of you who've been told, no, wait, don't, you can't. On that day, we show them a different possibility of who they can become and who we are and understand that the world is watching us as well. And there are millions of little shining stars out there all over the world who are looking to this nation and hoping and praying that we can do this. So the question that I have for you, Pennsylvania, can we do this? Can we do this? Can we do this? All right, let's fire it up, ready to go. We need you. Thank you.